Hi everyone, Mr. Hobbs here at Harvard High School. I want to take a real brief moment to kind of go over the second semester schedules. I know you received a letter or an email or both, hopefully, uh, from the high school with uh, some explanation of the schedule. I'm sure it could be a little confusing. So what I wanted to do today is actually go through a couple student schedules to give you an idea of what it would look like for next semester. What you're going to find is that 90% of our schedules for students are going to look very similar to the first semester. Our goal for second semester was to create more time in the schedule to give our students some breathing room, our teachers some breathing room, and also for some students who wanted to take more classes, they now can do so. So we'll kind of explain what the schedule looks like. Let me walk through a couple with you right now. So here you'll see is a sample schedule of one of our students for next semester. If you look at the schedule, it's divided by six periods. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are your 80 minute classes that we had last semester. What we did is created some space and put in some 40 minute time slots here, period one and five, and a 60 minute slot here in period three. The goal is to create more flexibility, flexibility in the schedule so students can take more classes. And we also have a break during the day instead of going five hours straight from nine to two. So in this example here, this student, as you can see, for second uh, semester, third quarter, these are the classes that they would take. They don't have a period one, they start at 8.50 with one class here. Third period would be AP Human Geography, which runs all 18 weeks. Then they'd have Algebra Two Honors, and then they would have Chemistry. So there's their four classes. They don't have a class during this period five, that's their lunch. Now looking at the last nine weeks, this student would have English, continue to have AP Human Geo, Spanish Two Dual Language, and in the fourth quarter here, the sixth term, they'd have health class. So as you can see, they still have half of their classes. Instead, instead of taking a full load, they take fewer classes so that they can concentrate on those classes. And in this student's schedule, lunch would fall during period five. Now here's another example of a different schedule. Same setup, six periods in the day. Now this is a student who wanted to take more classes. And in a traditional schedule, we can allow that. But in a flex schedule, this student can do so. So this student actually has an independent study, which they work out a time to meet with that teacher. During period one, they have PE will either be Monday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday during period one. In the first nine weeks, they're going to have PE, the AP Calc, AP US History, AP Computer Science, and Accounting One. In this person's schedule, lunch falls during period five. The second nine weeks, they're going to have the PE still, because that runs 18 weeks. English three. AP US History runs all 18 weeks as well. And then you'll notice they'll have a gap here. And they'll have, during the last term, honors physics. So this is a student who wanted to take more classes. And even with taking more classes, you'll notice in the second nine weeks, they have more time here in their schedule for flex. So they can use that time if they want to do some of the independent study work. So that's another student example. And here's the final example I'll share with you. And this is probably one of our most typical kinds of schedules here. You'll notice the schedule, same thing, six periods. But in this person's schedule, they'll have symphonic band on Tuesday and Friday. And in the first nine weeks, they're gonna have geometry, driver's ed, and strategies along with their symphonic band. Now you'll notice in this person's schedule, they have two openings here, the 60 minute and the 40 minute. They can choose either to do homework, relax, do lunch, it's up to them. That's the flexibility of the schedule. Now this student for this, the final nine weeks or the fourth quarter, they'll have symphonic band since it runs the 18 weeks. Then they'll have dual language Spanish, English, and science, ESPS, and again, They'll have four classes and they'll still have these two openings for lunch, homework, or whatever they choose to do with that. That's going to be a very typical schedule. So when people ask about, well, there's no set lunch, you're absolutely right, there isn't. And by creating a flex schedule, we're able to schedule more classes in and students could take lunch whenever they have an opening. Now, like my child, he tends to eat period one, two, three, four, five, and six, but that's just the way he is. But in a flex mod schedule, based on the student's individual schedule, and their openings and when it determines when they go ahead and eat lunch. So hopefully this has helped clear up a little bit more confusion about the schedule. And again, all we really have done is create more flexibility in the day 
to be able to allow for more classes and more flexibility in scheduling and also an opportunity to give some students a little bit of break during the day and from the screen. So hopefully by seeing some visual examples of student schedules, you have a better idea of what the second semester will look like. You probably noticed that the courses themselves pretty much are very similar to first semester. All we did is create some breathing room and opportunity for people to take more classes and, ske and schedule them out throughout the day a little bit more evenly. Um, this is called a flex mod kind of schedule. It's very innovative, but I will tell you the research that we've been doing over the last year from the schools that have incorporated this have found that it's done nothing but benefit staff and students in a variety of ways. And throughout next semester and beyond, we're gonna be explaining to you kind of what we're doing and why we're doing this. We feel that we really need to open up the schedule for students to be able to maximize all the things that they wanna take when they wanna take them. So again, if you have any questions, the best thing to do is start with your guidance counselor. Um, we can go ahead and go through schedules. The other thing too is right now we're taking this new schedule and having to run 800 student schedules now into this new structure. Our goal is by hopefully Monday that we could have the schedules live. Remember most of the course requests that your student requests at the beginning of the year, they're gonna have second semester. It's just what order they're gonna be in. So it's not like classes all of a sudden are gonna be drastically different. If they requested it, most of the classes are gonna be the same. We just wanted you to visually see what a schedule would look like so it could make more sense to you. So hopefully this was helpful. If I don't get to see you or, or talk to you, have a wonderful holiday. Be safe and take care. Thank you.